How's it going everybody? So you may have heard a lot about interest rates lately. People talking about the Federal Reserve hiking interest rates or the rising interest rates, all these different things, people talking about interest rates. And you may have been wondering, what are these interest rates that people have been talking about? And how will this even affect me as the average person or as an investor, or beginning investor? What are these interest rates going to do? So in this video, I want to go over what these interest rates are, what their purpose is, and how they affect you and also how you could possibly take advantage of the rising interest rates. Okay, so what do the interest rates mean? So when people talk about the interest rates, whether they're lowering or raising interest rates, they're generally talking about the federal funds rate. So the federal funds rate is set by the Federal Reserve, which is the America's Central Bank. And they set this target rate, which they suggest that banks use when they lend or borrow money from each other and charge this rate overnight. So this rate doesn't directly affect us, but since banks are using this for each other, and since we are the customers of the banks, then it also does affect us in a way because banks refer to this interest rate when they interact with us as well. Okay, so to the question that we all have on our minds, the interest rates are all good and cool and everything, but how does this affect me? How does this change my life or what does this matter to me? So there's three ways that I thought of that the interest rates could affect you and your finances. So the first is loans. The second is mortgages, which the interest rates aren't directly tied to mortgages, but they're similar in a way and they could cause mortgages, mortgage rates to move up or down in a similar direction. And the third is interest payments. And this is what you receive from holding money in a savings account. And we'll talk more about that one in a little bit. So when interest rates are raised, this makes it so that the cost of borrowing money gets more expensive. And so anytime you take out a loan, like if you were to go to the bank and try to take out an auto loan, then if the interest rate starts going up, then the interest you pay back on the loan starts going up. And so it starts to cost you more and more to take out a new loan. So say, for example, you went to buy a car right now, after the interest rates have been raised, then it may have been a little bit cheaper had you gone a couple months ago. So as interest rates go up, the cost of borrowing money gets more expensive. So another thing you may be wondering is, why does the Federal Reserve constantly change interest rates over the years? They bring them up, they take them down. What is the purpose of using these interest rates? So the interest rates are used to control inflation when the economy is doing well and also when the economy is doing poorly it's to promote people to spend money or to borrow money in order to boost the economy so when the economy is doing well people have a tendency to spend more money they feel like things are going well and they have money to spend and they are more willing to go out and borrow money so people will continue to borrow money spend money take out loans do all these different things and that creates a, a supply and demand issue. As people go out and spend more and more and more, the demand goes higher, the supply may go lower, which this causes people, or this causes merchants to raise the prices on items, which leads to inflation. So in order to keep inflation from getting out of hand, they gradually raise the interest rates to make it less and less attractive to borrow money because if the rates are higher or if it costs more to take out a loan, you're less likely to be incentivized to go and take out a loan that's gonna be more expensive. And then as they do this, then people tend to borrow less money. Then as items get priced higher and higher, they become less attractive. And then merchants have to become competitive with one another with their pricing. So they start lowering the prices and this controls inflation. Now, on the other hand, if the economy is not doing so well, then they tend to lower the interest rates to make it look more attractive to go and borrow money, which is what happened recently with the housing market. The mortgage rates went to all time lows and in combination with people working more from home, it became very attractive to go and buy a house that was further away from the city and people could increase their quality of living. So people went out and they borrowed more money they refinanced their houses, they did all these different things, and the result of that was that now the housing market has gone way up. So another thing that we've been hearing a lot about lately has been inflation. So you may be thinking that lately inflation has gotten out of control, and you may be wondering, when is inflation ever a good thing? 
So inflation can be a good thing because it helps an economy, but it can't be at a crazy rate or it can't get out of control. If it's a slow, gradual inflation, then the value of your assets and your investments gradually go up and this is good for you. But if you're always just holding on to your money, your money slowly loses spending power over time, which makes it feel less valuable. This is one of the reasons why I have a hard time with index funds is because people say if you put a little bit into it for the next 30 years, then by the end of the 30 years, you'll have a million dollars. Well, at the end of that 30 years also, your $1 million is going to have much less spending power or much less buying power than it would right now. And so you're gradually building up all of this savings, but in the end, you're not going to be able to buy as much with that million dollars as you would if you were able to use it today. So inflation is a good thing, but it also, if you're not careful with it, it can take away some of your spending power and you should do some careful planning when you're trying to plan for your investments and look for different assets that will help grow in value over time and help you become wealthy. But I'll make a separate video talking about mutual funds and index funds and talk about why I, why I like them in some ways and why I dislike them in other ways because overall I do like them and they are good but they're not the best investment out there. So in 2019, the Federal Reserve started lowering interest rates. And then in 2020, due to the global economic shutdown, they lowered interest rates all the way to pretty much zero. Due to the combination of events, we're feeling the pain now. So because of all the money printing, all the stimulus, all the, the, the economic shutdowns, everything was shut down, so now we're feeling supply chain shocks. So that's hitting both of the supply and the demand sides. For new cars, there's not enough parts, there's not enough chips, there's different things that are, are missing. And people have all this new money now, all this free money that they got, there's all the stimulus money. People have been making money from their investments and so they're going out and they're spending money. And so new cars are hard to come by and so used cars have gone way up in value. People are going and buying houses like crazy, so houses have gone way up in value. And all these different things are causing us to feel the inflation. So now this brings me to my third point, which is the interest payments. And you may be wondering maybe what that is, or how this will affect you, or how this can help you take advantage of rising interest rates. So in 2018 and 2019, before interest rates started being lowered, there were quite a few high yield savings accounts available. I had multiple high yield savings accounts that I was using to earn interest on the money that I was either saving or that I was waiting to spend on other things. And it was nice to have my money working for me a little bit. Also, if we do end up seeing any sort of a recession or an economic slowdown, then also these interest accounts or these high yield interest accounts will be beneficial as well. Now, I can't guarantee that they'll come back right away, but as the interest rates or the federal fund rates keep getting raised, it's very likely that the banks will start introducing these high yield savings accounts again because banks like to lend money when the interest rates go up because they make more money off the interest. Well, who can they incentivize to give them more money? us, the customers. And they incentivize us by saying, if you let me hold on to your money, then I will pay you an interest payment. And then they can take your money, go out and lend it and charge other people higher interest. And so they can make money off of it as well. But you as a customer or the client of the bank, you can make money off of leaving your money in this high yield savings account, rather than just leaving it anywhere else where it'll slowly lose spending power due to inflation. So in 2018 and 2019, when the interest rates were still higher, there was quite a few different accounts. Most of them were online banks that were offering decent yields for putting your money in there. And a couple of them that I used the most were SoFi, uh, Robinhood, and one called T-Mobile Money. And I'll probably make a separate video talking more about T-Mobile money. It is more beneficial if you are a T-Mobile customer. If you're not a T-Mobile customer, then it's not as beneficial. 
but it's a good one that I like to use. They've changed some things up lately that I haven't really agreed with, but it still is decent. So I'll make another video talking more about that. But when I was using SoFi or Robinhood, they were paying anywhere between 2 to 3% APY in interest. So in Robinhood, the money that you held in your brokerage account that you had not invested would earn 3% interest as it was sitting there. And they would pay you out whatever you had earned at the beginning of every month. SoFi was very similar. I think they were paying 2, 2.5% and they would also pay you out every month and that way your interest would compound as you would save up more and more. SoFi also had some interesting features that I really liked where you could set different little sections that they called vaults and you could save up a certain amount for a vacation or a certain amount for a new car and different things like that. And it was nice because it helped you keep track of what you were saving different amounts for. So like I said, it's not guaranteed that these are going to come back right away. But it is very likely that banks will start offering these high yield savings accounts as the federal funds rates are gradually increased. And from what it sounds like, the Federal Reserve is looking to gradually increase the federal funds rate to about 2% in the next couple of years. So it's very likely that banks are going to start offering these high yield savings accounts again and you could start taking advantage of these rising federal funds rates and make money for yourself. Now another thing to take into consideration is that as you start making money on these interest payments, the banks will start sending you tax forms for money that you'd earned on interest. And if you go to somewhere like H&R Block, they're going to charge you for this additional form as you file your taxes. So I didn't realize this and when I signed up for SoFi they gave me a $50 sign-on bonus and then I went to H&R Block and they asked me do you have any interest that you'd received and I told them yes and I showed them the SoFi thing and they said okay we're going to have to charge you $50 to use this extra form and so basically I made nothing because I earned $50 and then I spent it on the extra form at H&R Block. So now I do my taxes on my own because it's cheaper. So another thing that I want to talk about is earning interest on your money through cryptocurrency. And the way that I'm earning interest right now, the most interest is I'm keeping some of my savings in stable coins, which stable coins are just a crypto that equals $1 no matter what. There are quite a few crypto exchanges that are offering very high interest on just holding your money in their exchange. Right now, the one that I'm using is Voyager Digital. And I have some of my savings in USDC, which is one of the more common stable coins and more trustworthy ones. And I'm earning 9% interest just by holding my savings in their exchange. So this is one of the best ones that I've seen right now. A lot of different broker or a lot of different exchanges are offering similar rates. And with all the confusion about regulation and different things going on, I'm not sure how much longer this is going to last because I feel like the government is going to try to regulate this out of existing and they're going to try to bring the rates way down lower. So for now, I'm taking advantage of the high rates that these crypto exchanges are paying on stable coins and that's one of my favorite places to put my interest for now. I used to have some in BlockFi as well, but the SEC recently filed a lawsuit against them and they've changed everything and it's gotten really weird now and they don't offer the same rates. It's not the same. So I'm keeping most of my savings in Voyager right now because they haven't changed anything yet, but I don't know how long, how much longer that's going to last. So thanks for watching everybody. Uh, I'll leave some links in the description for SoFi, Robinhood, and Voyager Digital. I'll, I'll also leave a link for T-Mobile Money if you're interested. Um, another one that I had heard was pretty good was Ally Bank. That was another online high yield savings account. So just keep an eye out for these different savings accounts and kind of compare them, kind of keep watching to see if they start introducing their, their high yield savings again. Also comment below if you know of any other ways that interest rates will affect you or affect us as investors and as normal people. Also, if you have any high yield savings accounts or any other places that you're earning interest that may be affected by the raising interest rates, uh, leave them in the comments below so that we can all learn about it together. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.